What's up, future saints, parents of future saints? I'm Dr. B, and I'm your AP Human Geography teacher. Now look, this class is one of the two classes you can take for history as a freshman. You can take regular geography, or you can take my class, AP Human Geography. Now check it out. Here's the major difference between the two classes. In your regular geography class, the one that I grew up with, memorize the 50 states, memorize the capitals, what are the oceans and all that, that class is super boring. You don't want to take that class. Well, you might want to if that's your thing, but you want to take my class, AP Human Geography. Now here's the difference. I'm going to teach you about how humans interact with the world. I don't care if you don't know the state of California or New York or whatever. Should you? Yes, but I really don't care. Here's some things that I'm going to teach you about in my class. There's a map you're going to see in my room, super huge, got all the continents, all the countries and stuff like that. That map is lying to your face. It's been lying to you forever. Seriously. It's like Santa Claus. It's like the Easter Bunny. It's like the Tooth Fairy. It's just lying to you. It doesn't even exist. Super, super fake. So we're going to teach you about that when you get into my class. The other thing we're going to teach you about, you know over here Lone Hill, uh, on Lone Hill Avenue, Costco, Sam's Club? Why, why are they so close to each other? That makes no sense. I don't understand it. There's a reason. And you're going to learn about that in my class too. You see, we don't care about where places are. We care about why people interact with those places. So here's the thing about an AP class. An AP class is, it's a high level class. I'm gonna stress you. I'm gonna put you through the rigors, but at the end of the day, you're gonna be better for it. My AP class is the only class that you can take as a freshman where you can take a national exam and you can get college credit at the end of the year if you pass that exam. I'll give you an example. I had a student graduate a few years ago all four years, he passed 11 AP exams. Started USC as a sophomore. Mom and dad, I know you're listening. $65,000 savings because you uh, passed 11 AP exams. Sounds good to me, should sound good to you. All right, so here's what's unique about this class here at San Dimas High School. You get a grade bump. Now a normal grade, you get four points for an A, three points for a B, two points for a C. In my class, we get the extras. You get five for an A, four for a B, three for a C. That's how these students get these like 4.47,892 million GPAs. It's ridiculous. But what that does is that sets you up for when you apply to college. Because the UC schools and the CSU schools in the state of California, they no longer require you to take the SAT or the ACT. So what does that mean? What are they looking for? They're looking at your classes. And if you're taking high level classes, such as AP classes, that's going to set you apart from the other student. All right, let me tell you something else about how I run AP Hug. I love makeup work. If you don't do an assignment in August, you have weeks, a couple months to even turn it in. I don't care when you learn. I just care about the fact that you actually do learn. Now, if you bomb a test, you get 50%, 20%, 60%. Doesn't matter to me. I allow test corrections. I allow you test corrections up to 85%. So you can effectively get an F on the test, do test corrections, and then work your way up to a B. And the last piece that I do for my students is, well, I don't consider working with other people on homework as cheating. I actually encourage it because when you get older and you go out into the real world, the one thing that you're going to have to learn to do is work with other people. It's one of the most important skills that you're going to need in society. So for homework, if you have 15 questions, you do one through five, someone else does six through 10 and the other person does 11 through 15. Okay. You switch them up, you get all the answers, you submit your homework, you're good to go. Now, the people who should be taking this class, if you got an A or a B in both your history and your English class, you definitely need to be taking this class. You'll breeze right through it. Now, if you're getting a C in either of those classes, I really still think you should challenge yourself, and here's why. Athletes aren't expected to be the best they possibly can be right out of the gate. I don't expect you to be the best you can possibly be as an AP student. So I'm gonna teach you to crawl before I ask you to walk. And then when you start walking, then I'm gonna teach you to run. Or I look at it this way. It's gonna be like an airplane taking off. You start off real slow, you build up, you build up, and then we level off. And at the end of the year, we're gonna land the plane nice and soft. Basically what I'm saying is this, don't be scared by the fact that it's an AP class. I got you. I've been doing this class for seven years, and I will tell you what, no kid who takes my class at the beginning of the year ever drops out of the semester because it's been too hard. I'll take care of you and you're going to have the ride of your life. I promise you. Thanks.